welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We got Jensen on the pot. We just had an incredible 30 minute conversation. We should have just probably recorded <laughs> the whole thing. Jensen, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we should have recorded half of it. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks for having me on, bro. Dude, you have a very crazy story. So you were watching the live streams. This is how I got introduced to you. So Bryce introduced us, but you were watching the live yep. streams and then you started posting and I noticed one of your comments and it piqued my interest. So I want to talk to you about that. Can you tell us a quick backstory? What do you do? How you got into trading? Yeah, so I'm the GM of a luxury car customization detail business. Went to high school with Bryce, middle school, actually. We met when we were 13. We had a mutual best friend who happened to move down to Orlando. I'm at the gym with that guy, Tyler. And he's like, dude, Bryce put me onto this idea of trading, took $5,000, and it's 14 k right now. And we're on the treadmill, and I'm like, what? Like, how is that even possible? Now, none of this was sanctioned under the chart addicts, you know, strategy whatsoever. So this is not financial advice. But, you know, he was risking it for the biscuit and he ended up making money. So I was like, how do I do this? So I ended up getting set up with MetaTrader, do the whole thing. I might as well went to Vegas and just played slots, max bet, max bet, max bet. Because, yeah, lucky first week, four grand, all went down the next day. I kept trying, kept trying. I finally got sick of it. And Bryce was like, hey, man, you need to check out chart addicts. Like, this is the way to do this. You'll learn a system to where you're not just guessing. So I took a pause for a while in November of last year, started watching the live streams, started using the strategy, ended up taking $300 and turning it into $3,200 one week, paid myself, ended up taking the next week $600 and turned it into $9,400 Wow! in one week. Now, there was some over leveraging involved in that. I'm not going to lie to you, but... Using that strategy, I mean, it was crazy, man. Crazy. You said you said uh, five hundred so, to nine thousand, six hundred to over nine thousand. Yeah, over nine thousand. Yeah, I mean, if anyone says that they flipped six hundred to over nine thousand in a week and they say they didn't over leverage, that's bullshit. So I appreciate you. It's being not the truth. At least. Um, can you talk? Yeah, man, I gotta be week? real. Is there anything that you did different that week than what you normally do? No, no. I mean, that was like my third or fourth week actually trading live with you and just the setups, man. The setups, you know, getting to a healthy amount in that account before I started over leveraging, just playing the system like it's supposed to be, you know, minimizing the risk, taking profits, you know, taking partials, doing the whole thing. And it was the first week where I was like, I have to become a member. I have to take the master class. So that uh, that next week, or it was the December, yeah. So that was like two weeks later. I was in the December masterclass. And, yeah, I never uh, yeah. asked you this. First off, very impressive. The fact that you, I mean, you seriously did take action, and and we got blessed with great price action for about like a month and a half straight. So, you know, shout out to Nasdaq for that. But I never asked you. <laughs> talk to me about your live stream experience seeing the strategy kind of working, but maybe not having all the context and then getting into the class and now understanding how it works. Was there really a big difference or do you feel like the live stream was enough for you to start to understand what was going on? It was enough to be dangerous with, but you created, I created this self-reliance on you and, and the stream to say, Hey, this is where we're trading and this is what's going to happen. And that's cool. That's great. And it's very much appreciated for people that need proof of concept that this strategy works. But I mean, I'm, you're not going to be on the phone every day with me and saying, hey, take this trade, take that trade. So me, I like to be the best at everything I do. So if I don't have all the knowledge, you know, you can't, you can't move forward unless you fully understand something. So taking that class, having the tools to draw up fibs, you know, figuring out where these levels need to be and, and what price is doing and why it's doing it, game changer because now i can draw up whatever i need to and you know you have a better entry than me sometimes some i might have a better entry than you because we, we draw the fibs a little bit differently but it gave me the power to be able to make those decisions on my own and move forward Dude, I, first of all i love the competitiveness in the chat because now that everybody's kind of aware of the strategy now the competition is <laughs> who's getting better entries and i i'm not winning that that battle a lot of the time <laughs> and, and honestly i like i'm never <laughs> mad you know, this is one of the proudest things that I've that I've seen in the chart addicts community is just how many people are just getting effective and then also just being aware of what yeah. So that's really interesting. And then also the, the second thing I noticed is you wanted to take the power back in your hands. So even though mm -hmm. I'm doing all the work, at some point, what if I want to go hang out on a beach for two years? Just like get a house on the side of a mountain in Peru and just not 
stream. You, know, you can't rely yeah. on somebody else to be able to do it for you. So I think that was great. What are some things that you feel like you did different than others that allowed you to be this successful? Because this is a rare level of success in a short amount of time. Do you feel like there's any difference in what you're doing? Are you taking this a little bit more serious or what's going on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, since I was young, anything that I did, I had to be the absolute best at. Not even just competitive nature, but it's just how my brain works. So it, I'm also obsessive. So mm -hmm. if I start playing, like I started playing golf three years ago, I play every weekend, every weekend. And it was twice a week until I get that craft learned. Uh, my brain just doesn't stop. So getting into this, it was like, man, not only do you get to learn a skill that can help you through your life, but it, it's just the money is a, a side effect from that, obviously. But to be able to look at a chart and, you know, zoom out to the four hour and be like, OK, OK, the daily, see where everything's at and make money off of that and understand what the economy is doing and why it's pushing things it gives you a better global understanding of what's happening in our country and the world, but we profit off of it. So mm -hmm. seeing how awesome that is and being that I'm obsessive about things, it's like, I will be amazing at this. I don't care what it takes. So that means while I'm managing a company full time, I'm still looking and checking and my alerts are going off and I'm learning lessons the hard way. I'm learning, you know, lessons from our strategy, the great way, but it's my wife is tired of hearing about it, I'm sure. But every single day, how's your day? Well, you know, they had pushed back the 8A6 and I didn't get the best entry, but it was still profitable. And she's like, no, how was work? Oh, why do you think we have a group <laughs> chat? Like nobody around us is going to want <laughs> to have these conversations, even if they're interested in trading or markets. At some point, they're like, all right, I've heard enough. And that's why it's important. <laughs> to have these. That's why I think online communities are so great. Because, I mean, back in the day, you were kind of trapped in your locality. So if there wasn't people with a yeah. interest, you're screwed. All right. I guess I'm not trading. I guess I'm uh, foosball or whatever's going on in your town. Now you have yeah. communities of like interests and you can get around people that do care. You're like, bro, it did push through the 88.6. That's nuts. And they can relate because there's that common context. Now, what I obsession, were you always interested in trading from when you first started or were you like, yeah. this is a means to an end and then you got more interested in it? No, no. I mean, I've always been, since I saw what it could do, and until I was able to wrap my head around and figure it out, I mean, it, it interested me because it was a mystery. I wanted to understand what it was, how it worked, all that good stuff. But I never really saw it as a means to an end. It was more so something that could, you know, improve our quality of life as a family, get to go long-term or short-term goals a lot quicker, while not really sacrificing a whole lot of, I don't want to say not sacrificing time, because there's a lot of time that I put into this. But without, you know, having a second job where I'm away from my family, I can peek in, pop in and do, you know, catch a couple trades and it not affect my overall quality of life in a negative way. Yeah. The time thing about trading is it does take a lot of time to learn it. So there's there's this, you know, the learning process. But then once you get it down, mm -hmm. you can build a lifestyle around it that's very low effort. And I think that that's, you know, that's the benefit of a skill versus a business. You know, a business, I feel like even yeah. once you get it on the, off the ground, it doesn't stop. And so everyone's like, treat yep. trading like a business. I think treat trading like a high paying skill, you know? Yeah. I have an LLC for tax purposes, but, you know, that's the only business part about it. <laughs> sure. I mean, how you register for taxes and things. Yeah. Now, now we're getting into the mechanics. I'm not a tax expert either. <laughs> So do your own research. No, nope, not financial advice. <laughs> Definitely not financial advice. All right. I'm just a guy on a screen. <laughs> Don't. Hey. All right. So you said money is a byproduct of having a, you know, a clear understanding of a strategy and obviously good habits. Can you go more into that? Like, when did you develop that understanding? I am constantly developing that understanding, but it really like the first it took me 30 days after graduating less than 30 days after graduating the master class to get funded um for 100k and you know you once that happens you're like oh this is great i made it i understand everything but there's lessons you learn along that way about really managing your risk now that it's real money that can affect your payout but i mean every day like we were just having a conversation before this entries yes 886 is great but below the 886 like finding sweet spots in the market to enter, where to exit, depending on what you're doing, if you're on futures or CFDs or whatever, you know, whatever you're trading. And then just like times of days where things are volatile. I mean, you've given us awesome timeframes. I always look out for those, but 
Sometimes I notice on Thursdays, something goes a little crazier. That's non-news related. But learning more about what news affects which price action, you know, all of that stuff I'm still learning and, and, and getting a better understanding of, but all the little intricacies that set you up to know where you're aiming, that it, that's the interesting part about it too. The trading's fun, don't get me wrong, like just watching it come to fruition, but further understanding why, I think that's, I think that's the sweet spot about it. Yeah, so th that's also a trap. And I'm just, I'm just going to say this because I was in that same trap, which is if you actually are interested in this, because, you, you know, we're looking at how the world works. We're finding an opportunity somewhere between two different banks that are disagreeing in their policies or two different countries, economic stability. And we get to put our money at work to bet on what's going to happen. I think that's very interesting. But I also feel like when you have a mechanical system, it is that simple. It is. Yeah. Like, what does the computer do? The computer is not like, well... You know, if China does this and if it doesn't, like, no, this is the maximum <laughs> risk regardless. If Trump's president, Biden's president, if Powell's speaking or not speaking, the most I'm ever going to lose is this much. And that's the money side. Now, for my own personal interest, I love the game around it. You can find great opportunities, finding directional trends, cycles and stuff. But I think people focus too much on that before they just have this strategy that's just milking. And it kind of gets oh, them absolutely. by second guessing their strategy, you know? Yeah, I, I will never forget the day that I think it was like CPI got released and I did not look at my FX book or whatever you use for news, right? And I'm coming back from the gym and I lost my ass on a trade. I text Bryce, so I was like, yo, what the hell happened? And as like, it just went straight up and I was in, I was in shorts. He's like, CPI got released. So that's what I mean when I say understanding why things are happening. We have our strategy. That's like what we go for. But knowing volatile times <laughs> and understanding why they're volatile based on what results came out, that's a big part of understanding for me. You know, crucial. Yeah. When knowing to the, avoid. Knowing the roadmap, knowing where all the landmines are. Exactly. That's, exactly. That's good. Walk me through a timeline because I'm, I'm trying to understand this too. Walk me through a timeline of like when you got introduced to us to like when you got funded and then where you are now. Because this time, dude, I feel like it's only been a couple months, right? Or less. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, November, I started getting on the chats, you know, watching live. December, I did my master class. I got funded early January for 100K. I wrote that out for a while. I still have those accounts. And then when we decided to talk about futures, I, I feel like I was one of the first ones to be like, fuck it, I'll try it. So I jumped in there and within the first week, I had half a million dollars of funding. And then yesterday, which would be week three of trading futures, I got an additional 400,000 funding. Wow. So we're sitting at a million in funding right now. So it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy to think that I would hear stories when Bryce was trying to explain to me before I traded, like this guy that he knows is funded and he gets to keep a percentage of what he makes. And this is how it works. He gets paid out and he has multiple accounts and all this. I'm like, that sounds crazy, man. It doesn't even make sense. Like, why are people giving people this much money while they're risking their money? First of but, all, that's everyone's first reaction when you hear about prop firms. You're like, why would yeah. they fund somebody? <laughs> but so what are they so, doing? <laughs> you got a million dollars in funding in futures already. So I think when we started talking about futures was probably mid-February, which would put us at about three, four weeks ago, right? Right? Yeah. So, yeah. November, you start watching the live streams free on YouTube. December, yep. you're like, okay, I'm going to take the masterclass because you had that banger week. I'm assuming that was in November. That was in November. I think in November, I cashed out around 11K nice. before taking the class. And that was really like, I want to keep doing this. So yeah, December masterclass funded in January mm. with CFDs. And then yeah, three weeks of trading futures. We're at, we're at 900K in futures. Nice, bro. Nice. So. Congratulations. So there's a lot of folks it, that I feel like, uh, and, and you really have, you've only been trading for a year. Yeah. A right? year this month. And, a and lot I of took people, like five months off. <laughs> yep. A lot of people kind of see folks having success when they haven't been trading that long and they kind of get discouraged. Cause I, I think a lot of people will watch this and be like, well, I've been trading for two, three, four, whatever many years haven't had that success. I think people underestimate that if you haven't been trading that long, you don't have a lot of bad habits to unlearn. You've yeah. kind of just been building the right habits from the start. And then if there are a few bad habits, you know, you're able to kick them quick. 
what advantages do you see by being a beginner, you know, that, that has helped you be successful? I mean, the simplicity of it, really. Like, I'm not going to lie, the first month that I got introduced to trading, had no system. I'm looking at YouTube and it's like, cool, have these 12 indicators. And they're going to tell you when it's going to rain outside and how to make money. And it's like so confusing. Yeah. You got the VWAP going on here. You have all this stuff where yeah, I have zero indicators on my chart now. Mm-hmm. I have my Fibonacci retracement tool and what the volume's doing. So to strip range, away, right? what's that? You have the session range or no? Only when I'm marking up like in the beginning of the day, you know, before the market opens, I want to see what happens after market opens for about 15 to 30 minutes. Clear. It's gone. Love yeah. It. I'll check out what it did in that first 30 and then I'll kind of do fibs based on that to see if they're different to what my fibs were before market opened. Yeah, that's not um, really an indicator. That's more of like a, it's just more of a tool, like a visual tool. Yeah. Because I'm yeah it's just a time, I'm time frame. Here and timestamp the whole thing. But I'm no. sorry. So you don't have any indicators. You're keeping it very simple. Do, yep. So this is, do you have any issues with, let me, because I'm going to ask this from an advanced perspective. It's hard for you to kind of think about, well, what's the difference between a veteran and a beginner? Because you don't really have the veteran perspective. I'm, tr- yeah. I'm going to ask, do you feel like you deal with a lot of second guessing with the strategy, with entries, with certain things? Or do you feel like, no, this has been working. I'm just going to keep doing it kind of deal. Honestly, I I rarely second guess. And I can be a little eager sometimes, but I do wait for that confirmation. I might enter a small position, you know, when I'm a little unsure, as long as it's at the 86 or around it. And then if it goes down, you know, as a very beginner, when I first started with you guys, it would freak me out a little bit like, great, I'm going to draw down. What am I going to do? But right. after, you know, taking your advice and saying, you know, small entry up top or, you know, a little bit heavier at the bottom to, to total what you want to risk, that takes away the second guessing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm only risking a certain amount. You know, so at the end of the day, cool, we lost one. There's going to be a million more trades. So the second guessing, not so much. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't have a ton of the bad habits like you talked about, which is nice. You know, I've known people in finance for a long time, and their their heads spin. They have everything going on on their charts. It's like, man, it's not that complicated. Yep, and it's they're not, not that complicated. As much money as the as the traders. So nope. here's the deal. Because the reason I'm asking you a lot of these these questions about the the beginner stuff is folks who are listening to this, you can't go, you can't turn the clock back. You can't go backwards and become a beginner. What you can do is change your mindset and perspective to go back to a beginner's mindset, which is all the stuff that you've learned up until the years. Like if you do have a strategy that's working for you right now, every time that you're hesitating because of some concept you learned a couple of years ago, well, what if this is the fair value gap instead of the 88.6 and this one's actually going to go down? If you just stop doing that and you put yourself back in the beginner's mindset of just following the strategy, because this is what you've been, you know, this is what you've been doing that's successful. I think it's important for people. If you were listening to this at the very beginning, whoa, whoa, what happened? Okay. If you were listening to this and you were just starting out your trading career, is there any advice that you would give things to kind of help you speed up the process or become more successful? I would have listened to Bryce earlier when he said, don't mess around and try to figure it out on your own. You're not going to get it on your own. I mean, I would have saved myself tens of thousands of dollars. On, I was gambling. I was basically gambling at that point. You know, little indicators here and there. And then, well, is it going to go up or down today? We'll pick down. Just trying to capture little scalps. I would say, dude, skip that step. Like, it's like anything. You You should read the book before you go and skydive, you know, make sure that there's an instructor with you so they can guide you through it. I would have, I would have got education a lot sooner, man. It would have helped a ton. How much would you say that you put in to trading to learn by yourself? Because I feel like we all had the same learning curve, which is I will learn this, you know, I'm going to learn this at any cost, but you're going to find out what any cost means. All right. So okay. <laughs> what was that like? I mean, it was, it would be like 500 here, 500 there. But then you look at your, you look at your MetaTrader 5, rest in peace, you know, account balance and deposits and withdrawals and all that. And the number got up there, man. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's probably 10, 15 grand at least. <laughs> now, I mean, Just gone. Your trading life changes when you do that. When you pull it up and you get out the calculator, how much have I deposited? How many accounts have I bought? And then you do the full math and you're like, now there, wow. that I think is like the make or break moment though. Because I feel like folks will either quit at that point or you're going to make a decision. 
said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done doing the, de the degenerate stuff, gambling and all the bullshit, guessing the next candle. And I'm going to find a clear system. I'm going to get these habits figured out and make a change. Did you have that moment? Because you've only been trading for a year. It's like, it's still early for this. But did you have anything that was close to that? It wasn't like one moment, but at some point I was just like, I, it doesn't make financial sense to keep doing this. Cool. I had one good week and I took one payout or whatever. It, this was my own money. This wasn't like funded or anything like that. It was just straight to the, straight to the broker. But after seeing that number climb, yeah, there was a moment where I'm like, let me pump the brakes for a little bit. I need to figure out if, if I even want to do this. I told Bryce, like, I'm not really interested in, in it anymore. And then, yeah, it took a, it took a good four or five months until I started watching the streams. And once I saw that, hey, there is an easy system, that's when I jumped back on it. So I think I lasted three months in the markets by myself, took a five-month break, and then hopped back in with you guys. Incredible. Yep. That's that make or break moment, dude. So that's everyone it. has a choice to make. Is this for me or not? Jensen, this was very insightful. Hopefully we get you back on and hopefully we see more of you at the Chart Addicts community, maybe taking on you know, some a call or two a week, helping some folks out. But I appreciate Let's you.